And then she's like, does my husband play with your dick like this? Oh, gosh. Hey everybody and welcome back, or welcome if you are new. Hi, hello, how are ya? So I've got some content for you today and you're gonna wanna stay and witness this shit, okay? Because when I say that I found a book that we need to discuss together as people, as one, as friends, I literally, this was one of the most scalding hot tea scandalous, messy books I've ever read. It's one of those books that was just so I could not believe what I was reading that I had to take out my notes app and document what was happening because rarely is a book ever this just overtly the author did not give a single shit and wrote like no one was watching because okay look so Nyla K, Nyla K, Nyla fucking K. So I have read books from this author before. I read the book Double Edged because, look, it was the most canceled book on TikTok this year. I just had to get into the know. For any of you who don't know, I have this personality where it's like, if enough people tell me not to do something, I will end up doing it, okay? Everybody was like, you should hate this book, it's problematic, burn it alive! And I was like, why though? So yeah, this is like an ongoing series where I read some muddy books that are just like so we need to talk about them right now. And I do like full spoiler videos just telling you what happens. I've done one for Credence by Penelope Douglas, I've done one for Azula, I've done one for Double Edge. It's like a thing that I genuinely enjoy doing. So let me tell you about the book that we are gonna be discussing today. And that book is gonna be Push by none other than Nyla Kay. I'm gonna be spoiling the shit out of this book, but just trust me when I say you are gonna wanna hear this tea, okay? You're gonna wanna hear this fucking tea because this book went to places that no other book has gone. There is a huge difference between mainstream published romance and Kindle Unlimited romance. Kindle Unlimited romance slash smut are the kinds of books that don't give a fuck about mainstream appeal, don't give a fuck about appealing to the widest amount of audience, and so these authors write like no one's watching. So as I was reading this book, I buddy read this book with my good friend Meg over at Reading with Meg, and she hates romance. Like, she doesn't fuck with that genre at all and she very hesitantly agreed to buddy read this book with me. And when I say this 500 page book, she and I finished this 500 page book in the span of like two fucking days. This shit was special. Now, I'm gonna tell you about who I fan casted in this book, and this is really gonna help you with the story, okay? Just imagining these actors and imagining them in the story I'm gonna tell you about is going to enhance your experience, okay? So this is who I imagined in these roles as I consumed this story. So for Ben, I casted Charlie Hunnam, okay? This is Ben, Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy and the first Pacific Rim movie. And then for Jessica, Jessica, I casted Scarlett Johansson because, I don't know, the way she was described in the book just gave me ScarJo vibes and I just had to, okay? And then the character of Ryan, I casted Shawn Mendes. You will see what he gets up to in this fucking book, okay? And then for the character of Haley, I casted my friend Haley. <laughs> Kidding, no, I did not. <laughs> um, I casted the girl who played Hannah in 13 Reasons Why. Because I don't know, I was just like imagining if this ever turned into a Netflix movie, she would probably be in it and be, you know, victimized in this situation. And then the character of Tate, okay, Tate. I casted Ryan Reynolds from Deadpool. And just just put a pin in that. Just just wait and see. So now we're gonna get into it. Okay, so the story opens up with our main couple, Ben and Jessica. So, Charlie and Scarlett. So they've been married for about two decades, and they've got this daughter named Haley. Now, they got pregnant very young, so he knocked her up when she was only 17, and I think he was the same age. Either way, they were not old enough to be touching privates and getting pregnant. Getting pregnant in today's economy without a job, you're fucked. Somehow these guys managed to make a living for themselves, good for them. We love a good success story despite the odds, you know, pushing back against the odds. And Haley. 
So their daughter is named Haley. This is their daughter, Haley. And she is coming home for Thanksgiving weekend with her boyfriend. And her boyfriend is Ryan. So you've got Haley, you've got Ryan, and Ben is pissed off. Just looking at Ryan, he knows this guy is trouble. He knows that given his past, given the fact that men are horny, he's like, this guy wants to fuck my kid. And if he does that, She's gonna get pregnant, and she's gonna have to go through what I went through. He is the worst fear of a parent materialized. And Ben's attitude right off the bat is just horrible. The whole weekend, he's just making subtle jabs about why they shouldn't be together. He's making power trips. He's trying to intimidate Ryan. Total dick measuring contest. Like, straight men. Ugh. Anyway. Just you wait, just you wait. But then he lets them stay in the same room because the mom is like, don't make a big deal of things. They are adults. They're not gonna make mistakes. Our daughter is smart. So then we get to the first of our many salacious scenes. And this involves Ryan trying to get into Ben's good graces. So he helps him out with watering the plants. He's like, can I water that rose bush? And Ben is like, mm-hmm. Ben was doing chores all morning, he was sweaty, he was oiled up with sweat, he takes off his top, he's like, check me out. And Ryan's like, you know, drinking water from the hose, just like slurping it up, and they're like side-eyeing each other, and it's like, oh boy, this can only go one way. Ryan finds himself, for some reason, checking out Ben, he's like, okay, look, I love Haley, but her dad is looking sexual, okay, he is looking... Fine. <laughs> yes. So then they're trying to communicate after side-eyeing each other all afternoon, and Ben is like, the lawn looks great, so do the roses. That was some first-class watering. And I want to make myself nice and wet. Haley calls for Ryan. She's like, hurry before the ice cream melts. I put out some afternoon tea. And Ben is like, damn, they sound like a bunch of horny squirrels. This writing is a wild. It's like, do you get it? Because vanilla ice cream is white and jizz is white. Metaphor, poetry. Ryan likes to demonstrate his love to Haley by calling her this pet name. And the pet name he's chosen for her is Sweetness. Why? And there's just like so much like sexual tension and like sexual shit going on this weekend. Haley is accosting him. She's groping his and he's like, sweetness, we can't, da your dad is watching. And she, what was that accent? And he's like, you need to wait till we get back to uni before I can shove my meat in your hole. Actual dialogue. And she's like, but I can't, I can't wait, come to me. So that night they're having dinner with a bunch of friends over and a friend of Ben expresses that Ryan is hot. Okay, he's like, this boyfriend of your daughter, Interesting. Yum. And Ben is like, did you just call my daughter's boyfriend hot? And the friend's like, yeah, it's not like I'm gonna blow him or anything, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we love some tasteful foreshadowing. I, okay, all right. The dinner ends, Ben is like glaring at Ryan the whole time, and we get into some of Ben's internal monologue later on in the evening. Ben is like, I should have been in my own room, but I was too convinced that the stranger staying in my house was railing my daughter and laughing about it behind my back. And then we get into more of Nyla Kay's thoughts on how a young dad sounds. He's like, oh god, that's my daughter. She's being defiled by some hoodlum. Actual quote, verbatim. So Ben starts inventing stories of Ryan in his head. He hates Ryan. He is glaring at this guy, quote, like the Night King from Game of Thrones. We get to the point of view of Ryan, and Ryan is doing some investigating in the house that night during bedtime. And the door to the room of Ben and Jessica is open, and Ben is pounding her. They are having the intercourse in a house with other people, with the door open. If you are gonna take off everything and shove your hard dick in some Maybe consider locking the door, okay? Maybe that is a thing that you should do before you like shove it in her hole. You know, that's just like a thing. Locking doors should be a thing, right? You can't get too comfortable in these situations. You can't get too comfortable during Thanksgiving weekend. You can't. And then Ryan, while watching all this, gets a very awkwardly timed b 
pitching the tent. That's how he does it. So the next day, Ben is all flustered. He's getting drunk in his man cave because he turned the basement into some kind of like man cave or some shit like that. So he's getting drunk and he hears someone come in and that person is Ryan. And for some reason, Ryan is uh, shirtless. It's sweater weather. So my question is, where did all the clothes go? Where are they? So then Ryan sits next to Ben and they're getting drunk. They're like, you know, necking some beers. I don't know what was in those beers. I don't know what was playing on that TV, but there was something in that beer, okay? There was like some straight up Alex Jones, the water is turning the frogs gay in that beer because Ben starts to get aroused and Ryan sees this and Ryan <laughs> Ben's Okay, and Ben down Ryan's throat. And Ryan it's on Ben's chest. They ejaculated onto each other. The father, Haley's dad, received a from her boyfriend. So then both men feel really fucking guilty. They're like, I can't believe I did that. How could I have done that? What's wrong with me? But Ryan is leaving the next day. So they're like, you know what? It's all good. I cheated on my girlfriend. I cheated on my wife. But you know, we don't need to make eye contact tomorrow because Ryan and Haley are going home. I'm going home. I'm not gonna be here. We're not gonna see each other. But then the next day, plot twist. It turns out that the next day, Jessica wants to go shopping in the outlet store. Okay, so she's like, daughter, Haley, can you stay one more day so we can go shopping together? And Haley's like, yes. And Ryan's like, shit! So Ryan and Ben are forced to be in close proximity and be around each other sexually with the tension from the night before when they both cheated on their respective significant others with each other. So Ben and Ryan are shook. And that whole next day while they are shopping, Ben and Ryan are alone. And Ben is just like super rude to Ryan the entire time. He's like a total bitch. And I was just like, come on, man. So Ryan calls him out. He's like, why the fuck are you being rude to me, huh? Like you bitch. <laughs> and they fight. And in the middle of their fight, Ben slams Ryan on the wall. And you think he's gonna like punch him in the face. But then no, they start giving each other head again. And then Ryan proceeds to Ben in the Okay, no protection is used and they go at it like three times in the span of like three hours And you know this book was not written by a man when the men in this book can maintain For like three hours and Five times in a row. That's just not what happens. That's just like literal Superhero powers. So then Ben is like you can't stay here. You ruined everything and Ryan says actual quote It takes two to and Ben is just like surprised Pikachu face because it's like, I mean, duh. And then Ryan's like, I can prove to you that you want me. So then he f his d again in the same day. They're cramming as many f sessions as they can in the amount of hours that they can do so. At first, Ryan was intimidated by Ben because Ben was being domineering, asserting his dominance over him the entire time. But then Ryan says, and if we get this internal monologue, he's like, can you be afraid of someone that you f in the I guess not. So Ben is avoiding Ryan and Ryan gets pissed that Ben doesn't want him. So he's getting all mad. He's like slamming the dishwasher, almost like breaking every single dish this family owns basically. And then Ben eventually is like, what is wrong with you, Ryan? And Ryan's like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? And Ben is like, touche. Meet me in the shed later. We can work things out. Ben. During dinner, Jess is signaling to Ben that she is she wants the D. So that night he eats out her and he hears something creaking in the door and he sees that Ryan is watching them and not only is Ryan watching them, Ryan is like fully like just right there. And for some reason, Jessica doesn't hear. Okay. So he's like in the middle of eating her out and I was just thinking, how is he going to find the time to leave and work things out with Ryan in the shed? And then we get this quote. I made my wife so hard she slipped into a mini coma. And this isn't the first time Jessica just falls asleep to advance the plot, you know, like, shh. just wait, okay? So Ben goes to the shed and in the shed is Ryan and Ryan is in nothing but his underwear. And they make out and Ryan says, you taste like And then Ben proceeds to eat Ryan's And then he's like, I ate his the way I ate Jessica's 
and then Ben Ryan this time, and then he inside him without protection. Also, it's been three days, and he's calling Ryan baby already. He's calling him baby. Excuse- what? How the fuck? Okay, just hear me out. Just, like, hear me out. How the fuck did two straight guys who know nothing about gay s um, not bleed to death on the first try? How did they know what to do? How did nothing get ripped? How is there no internal bleeding? You, Nyla, make these guys sound like they have 12-inch Spit alone does not work. Also, coming five times in a row. In what universe? So eventually Thanksgiving weekend ends, and then Ryan and Haley go back to university. Ryan is doing law school. Ryan can't stop thinking about Ben, so he decides to just like go out, clear his head, and he goes to this bar where he meets this guy. Now the guy in the bar is a guy who is at the Thanksgiving party. His name is Tate. And it's like the two of them play some game over drinking, and Ryan is thinking that Tate is really good looking. And then Tate is like, hmm, I sense that there's some connection between us. So Tate is like, meet me in the bathroom in five minutes. And I'm like, Ryan. So he meets Tate in the bathroom, and Tate is like, you know, I know you have a thing for Ben, Benjamin Lockhart, so you can f me in the and while you're doing so, you can totally pretend I'm Ben. And Brian's like, okay, let's do it. Now put a pin in that, because oh boy, oh boy, if you thought Nyla K put this character in there for no reason, just you fucking wait. So some days pass, and we find out that it's Haley's birthday, and so the parents drive over to, to meet Haley. The entire time, Ben is like, oh my gosh, am I gonna see Ryan? I kinda wanna see him though. So they meet Haley, and Ryan, strangely enough, is not there. Where is he? Plot twist. Haley and Ryan broke up off screen. And Ben is pissed. He's like, damn it. He gets all depressed and he calls up Ryan on the phone and is like, hey buddy, can you meet me? I miss you. And Ryan drives over to the hotel that Ben is in. Ben meets him in the car and Ryan, of course, is wearing, I will give you negative three seconds to guess, gray sweatpants. Nyla, she wrote this book and didn't give a fuck, and I totally support her right to do so. I support her right to write. So they're having like a moment together in the car, they go back to Ryan's place, and Ryan feels the need to confess. He's like, I fucked Tate. And Ben is like, why? And Ryan's like, to forget you, okay? But I imagined you. And Ben is like, so again, they go at it. Like they just get it on. And we get some amazing dialogue, like you so good, baby, and I love this perfect dick inside me. <laughs> and then I could feel Ryan release inside me, and it sent me over the edge. I started coming so hard, it was like diving headfirst off Niagara Falls. Now, I don't know about you, but if I jumped headfirst off fucking Niagara Falls, I would be shitting myself on the way down. I would be full on like paintball shitting out of my asshole because bitch, does that sound like an orgasm to you? Does that sound exciting to you? Does that sound beautiful? Does that sound like a beautiful experience you would like to have while getting railed, falling down a waterfall? What the <laughs> Now here's where some shit goes down. One, Ryan leaves a hickey on Ben's ass. Two, Ben gets home after his evening at Ryan's abode, and he sees Jessica just, like, looking at him. She's like this. She's like, where the fuck have you been? And he's like, um, I went for a run. <laughs> and she reveals that she followed him the night before, because he left, and he left in somebody else's car, so she followed the car, and she was like, what did you do at Ryan's house? And of course, Ben can't lie anymore, so he confesses, and Jessica's all pissed, she slaps him, she's like, you son of a bitch, and then she falls asleep. How? Like, bitch, I have been cheated on before, okay? I know what that anger is like. Trust me, I was not able to fall asleep after. Like, what the fuck? Now, Jessica has a plan of her own. She's like, I'm gonna pay Ryan a visit, and she does, and she shows up at his house, and Ryan's like, I'm fucked. She's gonna kill me. She doesn't kill him. She doesn't. She kisses him on the neck, and he gets a Now, I need you to pause and take a shot every time someone's dick twitches in a super fucking inappropriate scene because that is literally this entire book. So Jess gets home and Jess and Ben start to have like makeup 
And this is like the first penetrative heterosexual love scene in this book. And this is why I don't read straight people smut, okay? Like, the word juices is used. I can hear that word, okay? I can hear the sound effects that a word like that would have. And I don't like it. Also, during this scene, we get some more writing um, along the lines of, and I quote, my balls were about to explode. There are so many other ways you could have worded this orgasmic situation. Exploding balls does not sound sexy at all. And I love balls. Also, he said, her gushed all over my the word juices, the word gushed, um, maybe straight guys would be into this shit, but sword swallowers like myself, just no. They begin to communicate, they begin to open up, they begin to talk, and Jess is like, you know, you should have just asked me if you wanted to bone Ryan. And Ben is like, why? And Jess says, because I would have been into it. Bitch! <laughs> so then Ryan drunkenly calls Ben because he like desires the D and Ben is like, I f***ed my wife all day. And Ryan's like, excuse me? Ryan is super like scared because he's like, oh shit, Jessica knows that I had an affair with her husband. She's probably gonna kill me. But Ben is like, do you want to know what it would feel like to f*** my wife's f***? Do you find my wife attractive? And Ryan's like, uh, yes. <laughs> so then Ben hangs up the call. And then a few moments pass and Jessica calls Ryan. And Jessica's like, hey, don't tell Ben I'm calling you, but can you come by the hotel later? So Ryan arrives at the hotel and he gets into the suite and Jessica is in nothing but a robe. And then he says, you're the sexiest mom I've ever seen. I wanted to throw up. I was dry retching in this part. And so she disrobes and bares her breasts. And Ryan can't help himself, so he goes at it, and Ben is like, he was f***ing my wife's n like a fiend. And then Jessica's like, oh, gosh. And then she's like, does my husband play with your d like this? Oh, gosh. So they start going at it, and then Nyla Kay comes in, and she's like, I'm gonna show these people how to write an orgasm like a pro. So she opens up her laptop, she clicks her knuckles, and she goes, she puts her fingers on the keyboard, and she goes, Listen to this. Excitement vibrated through me like I had stuck my fingers in an electrical socket. And then we get into some voyeurism, okay? Jessica gets into the tub, her fingers disappear below the water, and she gives Ben and Ryan some instruction. So then they get into the tub with her, and then she makes Ryan f her from behind, and then Ben f on her face, and then they pretty much like spit f her, and then Ben starts to f Ryan's and then he f***s Jessica, and then all three of them cream. Her pussy is described as a sweet little cupcake for some reason. At this point, I was actually starting to get emotionally invested in the story. The couple starts to really take a liking to Ryan, so they invite him to the Christmas party, and Ryan and Ben double Jessica. And then we get into some amazing Jane Austen dialogue because she's like, you're ripping me apart with your big So then Ben and Ryan are having this heartfelt conversation. He knows that Ryan is struggling financially. So he's like, you know what, Ryan, I'm going to give you some dollars. I'm going to give you $5,000 to help you out because I know you're struggling. And Ryan is like, I love you. Ryan chooses the, this moment to confess his love for Ben. And then Ben offers Ryan a job. And Ryan is like, Ben, there's something I have to tell you. I love you. And then Ben, like something flips a switch in him. Like he just completely wigs out. He freaks out. He's like, dude, you can't do that. What the fuck? No, you can't have these feelings for me. Everything's gonna get ruined. Ryan understandably gets really hurt. He storms out. He's like, fuck this. Like, you led me on, you son of a bitch. I am done with you, I'm done with her. Fuck off. So he gets out of there. Now, remove the pin. Because Tate comes back into the picture now. Ryan is all depressed. The place he lives in is five hours away. So he just stays in the area a bit. He sleeps in his car. He is in no shape to make a super long drive. So he hits up Tate, the friend of Ben, who was at the Thanksgiving dinner, who he fucked in the bathroom. He's like, Tate lives around here. 
So he hits up Tate. Tate invites him to his house. They get it on again. Sexual. And Tate's like, you know what, dude? I was invited to a Christmas party. Do you want to come? Guess whose Christmas party this is. Also, this is a Christmas book. Nice. Anyway, the Christmas party is, of course, Ben and Jessica's Christmas party. And he's like, do you want to come? And Ryan's like, yeah, I want to piss him off. I want to make him mad. I know that he doesn't like the fact that we fucked. So I want to show up with you. So he does. So he shows up and Ben is like, what the fuck are you doing here? And Ryan is like, what do you think I'm doing here, bitch? I'm with someone. I'm someone's guest. I'm his guest. Ryan looks at Tate and he's like, no way. So then hard cut to Ben. He's confronting Tate. He's like, how dare you make him come? And then Tate says, I did multiple times. And I'm like, oh shit. Oh shit. He went there. And then Ben gets fucking pissed. He takes Tate, he pushes him against the wall, he punches him in the face, and I was like, at this point, I was like, bitch, I wish I was at this Christmas party, okay? Bitch! So then Ryan gets all pissed, he goes home with Tate, fast forward to New Year's, and Ben realizes that Ryan blocked his number. So he's like, oh shit, he decides to drive five hours to Ryan's house, and his roommates are like, you son of a bitch, you broke his heart, Fuck you, get the fuck out of here. And Ben is like, oh shit. So he drives home and then he remembers that he promised Jessica that he would be home in time for New Year's. And I was like, what the fuck? The tension in this scene and the tension and the drama and the suspense in this book in general, like, dude, I was on the edge of my fucking seat, okay? Like, I was just like, fucking shitting myself. It was amazing. This book literally is more intense more thrilling and more exciting than anything Stephen King has written in the past 20 years and your ass can quote me on that. Okay, just putting it out there. So we learned that Ryan apparently went to Boston for law school and he's living with his aunt in Boston and we fast forward to the future, Ben finds out about this and he shows up on Ryan's door. I was emotional, okay? I was getting emotional. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not going to lie to you today. And then, are you ready to shit yourself? Let me know if you're ready, okay? So then Ben is like, hey, you, Ryan, I miss you, I love you. Ryan's like, Ben, I missed you too, I love you too. And then Ben is like, you know how you and I have been fucking my wife without protection? She's pregnant. And Ryan's like, oh, that's great. You came here all the way to tell me that. And then Ben is like, and the baby is yours. Bitch, bit, bitch. What the fuck? So then Ryan's like, Oh shit. But then he kind of likes the idea. So hard cut to the three of them. They're vacationing in Thailand. And while they're in Thailand, all three of them get married. Because <laughs> apparently Ryan's like, you know what? I want to raise this kid too. I want to marry this couple too. Everybody was magically okay with this. They eventually had to tell Haley, And understandably, she was like, um, okay, I broke up with him. So I don't have a claim on him. But this is fucked. Yeah, the three live happily ever after. If any of you are wondering what I gave this book, I gave this book five fucking stars. It was amazing. Nyla Kay is the kind of author who writes like no one is fucking watching. She doesn't give a fuck. And that kind of energy in this story was honestly just everything that I needed. It distracted me from my life. It was tea. If a Maserati needs some fucking gasoline, McKay needs some hot scalding fucking tea, okay? And this is what this book was and I loved it. Thanks for watching. If any of you made it this far, leave a standard red heart in the chat so I know that you watched the whole thing. If you know of any other books, KU, smut, dark romance, fucked up shit, that you want to see me do a full video on, comment down below and I will check them out. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in future videos and as always, take care. I lose myself